Before that is why in Okay, I know. Siya bonga uti amen. All the best with your dreams. I'll share again. Ugo tumbuzo wako for our teacher. Utin. My question is, what is the difference between hypothesis and the theory? Great, thanks for that question. What is the difference between a hypothesis and a theory? Now, being involved in life sciences and really loving the subject, okay, we are scientific minds. We have scientific minds. And as scientists, we like to look at the world, we like to observe the world, and question why do things work the way they do? And the only way that we can come up with these hypotheses or theories is by testing these questions to see why things work the way they do. So. When we, we test these theories, we need to follow a basic set of rules because obviously it's not just us here in South Africa that are looking at the way the world works. It's happening all over the world. So in order for evidence to be valid and reliable, we need to follow a specific set of rules. Now, those set of rules we, we call the scientific method and I'm sure you guys have heard of it before. So if we have a look at the screen, we'll see the first few things we need to do is observe, question and research. So for example, you're sitting at home and you see that there are a pair of bluebirds that are building a nest in your tree. And this happens every year. They build a nest, they mate, babies are born, and then they fly away and they come back the next year in the spring. And you see that sometimes the male bird gets really, really angry with the female bird, okay? And you want to know why does this happen? So through your observation and asking this question and your research by maybe watching the birds for a few years, you come up with this hypothesis that aggression varies throughout the cycle, the, the reproduction cycle of the birds. Okay, so that is what our hypothesis is. Or a nice way to think of it is an educated guess. Okay, we make that guess because of what we have observed, questioned and researched. Now in order to test that, we have to experiment. So because this is not a kind of experiment that you can set up in a lab, a lot of the experimentation is going to be done by observing and taking down notes, possibly looking in a friend's garden if they also have a pair of these birds. And once you have done this, these experiments, you will have results. You then need to analyze your results and you will come to a conclusion. Now what's very important is that you communicate this conclusion, whether it be by word of mouth or in the form of a report, so that other scientists can listen to your hypothesis. And if you confirm your hypothesis, we call it a theory. Okay, so let's just have a quick look at some vocab. What is a fact? A fact is something that really exists or something that can be confirmed by evidence, which is usually observable. So facts can be proven false in the light of new evidence, but you're happy with what a fact is, yes? Mm -hmm. If it's fact, it's truth. My shirt is gray, Addo's shirt is yellow. We can see that you can't prove us wrong unless the whole world changes and colors become different. <laughs> okay, so what is a hypothesis? A hypothesis puts forward a proposed explanation for something based on evidence or observations. It still needs to be tested by investigation or further observation before it can be accepted as something truthful or rejected as false. Okay, so like I said, it is an educated guess. Right, so this educated guess, once you have researched it and you have come up with a whole lot of results and you have analyzed this data and you've put it into spreadsheets or a report or whatever it may be, it may be called a theory. Okay, so a theory is a confirmed hypothesis based on facts and it logically explains something. It is tested and confirmed by many scientists who have done much research. Therefore, it is a widely accepted explanation. Okay, 
And as you can see with this slide, it says a theory will be supported by further investigation and new supporting evidence. What that means is if I come up with my theory about my birds in the garden, you're still with me on that example, okay, and you at your house or maybe someone in a completely other area wants to also research this hypothesis, following those scientific rules or that scientific method, which is why we use these rules, Technically, if my hypothesis has been researched correctly, anyone that researches that hypothesis should be able to prove it correct. Okay, if something else comes up and they see that what I was talking was absolute rubbish, then my theory may be rejected, okay, and called false. So what theories have you heard about in, in life sciences? Quickly, quickly, quickly. Lamarck's theory. Lamarck's theory, what does he say? He's, he was the one with giraffes? He is giraffes. Okay, an adaptation. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that sort of that ties into is the theory of evolution. And what the theory of evolution says is that all animals or all organisms come from a common ancestor. And they just sort of have to adapt to where they are living or what their living conditions need. Okay, another theory is the cell theory. Have you heard that? Okay, the cell theory says that all living organisms are made up of cells, which we know. I mean, that's fact. It makes sense. Yes. Okay? Well, I hope so. I hope I've got a whole I lot of cells. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Otherwise, I don't know what life is anymore. Okay, and the cell theory also says that new cells cannot just arise out of thin air. They need to come from pre-existing cells. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just like you cut yourself, these new cells don't just magically appear the bottom layers, they slowly reproduce and they push the new cells up, 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 up. Okay, and then also the central dogma th theory, which talks about DNA and how DNA makes RNA and RNA makes protein. You guys, does this, is this all ringing bells? Okay, good. So these are examples of theories in science. Now just be very careful, guys. The way we use the word theory in everyday language is different to how we use theory in the, the science classroom, okay? If I say I have a theory that Addo is bunking my class, but I don't actually know for sure if she's bunking or if she's sick, do you see I'm not making an educated guess? Mm. Okay, I'm just making up some nonsense. Okay, so be careful um, how, how you use the word theory in life sciences. It is an educated guess or hypothesis that has been proven correct due to much research and observation and experimentation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Saubon. Hi, Pits. We are Pilagoto. Appeal <laughs> Ba revise, ba seven seven oti shala ba bo en ba bokele kile zanat on SPC one. Eh eh, nanto. Sisom ukabili. Iti ni question ako. Is it true to say that evolution is just a theory? So, is it true to say that evolution is just a theory? Okay, remember, if you are talking about theory and everyday sort of language, you know, where I think Addo's bunking my class when she's actually actually sick, then you're doing you're going about it the wrong way. Yes, evolution is just a theory, but what is a theory? It's an educated guess that has been confirmed, it has been proven correct. So how evolution occurs is a well-developed theory with much supporting factual evidence. Scientists have been trying to prove this theory or have been researching this theory for over a hundred years. The fact that this theory has stood the test of time, the fact that it is international and it is the same all over the world, shows us that it is actually fact. Yes, it's a theory, but it is fact. And because so many scientists all over the world accept this theory of evolution, you'll often hear it to be called the principle of evolution or the law of evolution. And we know laws are immovable, 
okay, and they are binding. So it is, it, it forms a really big basis in biology and we're actually gonna be covering evolution and different aspects of it over the next few weeks. So make sure you also get to Moby School to find the in detailed um, lessons because evolution is such a massive topic. Mm -hmm. Okay, but very quickly, how is how has evolution been uh, proven correct? Well, one way is with fossil evidence. So we know fossils are any preserved evidence of life from a past geological age, such as the impressions and remains of organisms embedded in stratified rocks. So scientists have been able to study these fossils and see that fossils have changed. Therefore, the organisms have changed as the years have gone by. Another way is comparative anatomy. What comparative anatomy is, it is the study of comparing and contrasting anatomical structures in different species. And we can find homologous structures which are similar in different species that suggest that they came from a common ancestor. So for example, our arm is made up of the bone, the humerus, we have the radius and the ulna, we have metacarpals and phalanges. If you look at the, bat, the wing of a bat, it also has the similar bones in it. Okay, another one is comparative embryology. And we can see that we actually have a tailbone. And in a dog or a cat, that tailbone goes out into a long tail. So it gives us some evidence that there is a common ancestor between us and animals with a tail. Okay, um, some scientists claim that this is not enough, but it really is. Kilesa Nazi.